Into the woods we go again. As Joyce Kilmer might have written, I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as an olive tree. But as Seth Doan tells us, if you want to see the pride of Puglia, you'd better hurry. In this part of Italy, olive trees don't just dot the landscape, they define it. They're so important here in Puglia, in the heel of Italy's boot, that locals use words like patrimony and cultural heritage when describing them. I'm in the oil business, <laughs> but not the Texas oil business. I'm in the real oil business. Here, that's olive oil. It's turned Paul Capelli into a farmer. To go out and plow the fields, cut the grass. It's not green acres <laughs> from uh, the 60s or the 70s, but it's kind of like that. He'd been an advertising executive in New York City until a few years ago, when he left his job and moved to this home on the ancient Appian Way, surrounded by olive trees. So it's very grassy. Today, Villa Capelli produces about 10,000 liters of olive oil, 95% of it sold in the U.S. It's a dream come true with the nightmare behind me. That's what it feels like, a nightmare? Yeah, it feels like I'm, I'm always looking over my shoulder. This is what his nightmare looks like, a disease that's killing olive trees by the millions, just a few hours drive south in a part of Puglia called Salento. I heard you call this a olive tree cemetery. Yes, cemetery or just in few cases, last stage hospital. Pierre Federico Lanotte is an Italian government scientist who's trying to stop the spread of this disease called Silella fastidiosa. The European Commission considers the plant bacteria one of the most dangerous in the world. It's carried from tree to tree by a little bug. Oil from an infected tree is still safe to consume, but the tree soon dries up and is no longer able to produce olives. This epidemic has the potential, if uh, we couldn't stop it in time, to destroy completely the olive oil industry of this region. More than a third of America's olive oil comes from Italy, and Puglia produces about 40% of all of Italy's oil. Of the roughly 60 million olive trees in Puglia, an estimated 10 million are already infected, including some of the oldest. Uh, this uh, is 1,500 uh, uh, years old. 1,500 year old tree? Yes, now it's almost completely dead. Lenote blames globalization for spreading the pathogen, which was likely carried to Italy from Central America only about five years ago. That was the first time Silella was detected in Europe. What went wrong? Farmers, government, scientists? A uh, little bit of uh, every factor that you mentioned. The research moved uh, immediately, but a lot of people couldn't believe at the beginning that uh, so dangerous uh, disease could uh, appear and move so quickly on the territory. Today, they're taking drastic measures. The government is testing trees and destroying the sick ones chopping them down by the thousands and burning the leaves to try to stop the spread of the disease. It hurts my heart, Ottavio Vincenzi told us. My grandparents raised and cared for these trees. I can't even look at them anymore. This 75-year-old former olive farmer abandoned his trees, nearly 700 of them, his life's work. There's not life, there's no work, there's nothing, he told us. So these are two specimens of Philanus pumarius. This is that previously harmless bug that's spreading the pathogen. Scientists, including Maria Saponari in the regional capital of Bari, are trying to understand the disease and how it spread. Here we uh, inoculated the, uh, the plants with the bacterium. You uh, put the we bacteria put the bacterium in here there. To, fa to, have, to infect the plants and then to observe the, the reaction of the plants in the next uh, months. But Saponari explained in greenhouse conditions the incubation period of the disease can be about a year. So a tree can be infected and yes. it visually won't appear yes, infected. Exactly and you could even test an infected tree, and if it's too early in the incubation period, you wouldn't know. Yes, yes. We are trying to save the old trunk, but at the same time to verify and to look for 
new resistant uh, varieties. Back in the field, her colleague, Pierre Federico Lenote, is trying to graft disease-resistant olive varieties onto infected trunks. This is, seems to be doing well? Yes, it's, uh, it's growing very well. To try to save some trees. You say trying to stop this is a race against time. Yes. Is it a race that you're losing? Oh, uh, at the moment I, I have to say yes. See? Now you see uh, this yeah. and you say, was that from frost or was, or was that the beginning of the end? Paul Capelli has tested his trees and there's no sign of Silella, not yet. It's like the black death is coming. That's what it feels like? Yeah, it feels like, you know, if I look over my shoulder and I see dark clouds, it's the bubonic plague coming towards the town. Olive trees, a way of life in southern Italy in a fight for survival.